to the second semifinal game between the second place Celtics and the third place Sixers. We'll begin by introducing the two teams lineups starting with the Celtics. First, number 15 is Matt Shabelli. Number 10 is David Vasari. Number five, Jason Chen. Number one is Michael Liu. And the starting lineup for the Celtics, number 54 is Donald DeRocher. Number 12 is Marvin Mothersill. Number three, John O'Leary. Number nine, Drew Weiner. And number 21, Bobby Skane. Head coach of the Celtics is Magic Revere. Assistant coaches are Joe Young and Iggy Gibson. And now the lineup for the Sixers. First, number 33, Sammy Jean. Number 12, Sean Hickey. Number three, Evanson Blanc. Number seven, Jonathan Lamb. Now the starting lineup for the Sixers. Number 31, John McMillan. Number 11, Ricky Douglas. Number 22, Eric Ribeiro. Number 15, Matt Emanuel. And number 24, Oldrin Cheridor. Head coach of the Sixers is Cliff Williams. Assistant coaches are Michael McQuado and Kenny LaFosse. And with the lineup set, we welcome you to the second game of the first round of the 2007 MNBL playoffs, number two seed Celtics taking on the number three seeded Sixers. All time number two seed versus number three seed has a losing record actually, 10 and 11. This is Jim Foley alongside Elias Feldman. How you doing Elias? Well, pleasure to be aboard and this should be a good one. I mean the Celtics, one of the better teams in this league coming in at 12 and two, riding a two game win streak. The Sixers, I mean, this is really my sleeper team of this tournament. One game, they're in the championship game tomorrow against the Kings. And the Sixers, if Sheridor comes out, plays the way he's capable of playing, we've, we've seen him drop 34 points in one game. Tip-off is underway. Celtics take it. Here's Bobby Skane to start his team's offense, number 21. Number 9, Weiner, is at the top of the key. Those two are the Celtics' two number... Um, Top players. Turnover right away goes Sixers ball. And both these teams, they've split the season series against each other. The Celtics won emphatically in their first matchup this season. The Celtics won 74 to 42. Much later in the season, we had an overtime affair. The Sixers won that game 70 to 58. So both these teams very evenly matched. But the one real difference maker could be that the Sixers have never faced the Celtics with Marvin Mothersill in the lineup. And he's out there today starting for the Celtics. As he hits the shot right there, gets his team off to a 2-0 lead. Sixers coach Cliff Williams actually said he wanted to play the Celtics while Coach Magic says he wants to play the Sixers. So both these teams are ready for this matchup. And the starting lineup for the Celtics, O'Leary, DeRocher, Mothersill, uh, Skane, and Weiner. 
for the Sixers on the other side, Ribeiro, Douglas, McMillan, Emmanuel, and Sheridor rounding out their starting five. Coach Cliff Williams, when asked about how he was going to prepare for Mother Still, he said he had no idea. I mean, how do you prepare for someone you haven't seen all season long? So that'll be one advantage for the, for the Celtics today if Mother Still can step it up and take advantage of a team that hasn't seen them all season long. Weiner with the quick steal. Ball goes out of bounds. Stay Celtics way. Still 2-0 Celtics early on in this first quarter as we hit our first timeout. Just over eight minutes left in this first quarter, Elias. And Mother Sill is one of three players on the Celtics roster averaging in double figures. Mother Sill coming in at 12 points a game. Skane the leading scorer in the league, the only player in the MNBL averaging 20-plus points a game at 20.9. And Drew Weiner, the final good player of that trio, averaging 15.4. So that three-headed monster, if they come out and play the way they're capable of playing, the Celtics are a very, very dangerous team. When the Celtics and Sixers met in the regular season, the Sixers were down 20 points at halftime before they came back to win in overtime. That was the second time they had met. Sixers know they can beat the Celtics team. They're one of only two teams that have done so, other team being the Kings. That's a tough task for the Celtics to have to face the two teams, possibly, that were the only ones that were able to beat you in the regular season. And a very relevant subplot in this matchup at well, the coaching staff, Coach Magic for the Celtics and uh, Coach Cliff Williams for the Sixers. Both were on the Celtics sideline together in 2000. That was the championship year for the Celtics. And ever since they split up, ever since they weren't walking the sideline together, this has been a major rivalry in the MNBL. Douglas gets the first points for the Sixers. It's tied to a piece. Gain from the baseline. Can't hit. Ball goes out of bounds. Sixers ball. And we'll see early on if Skane's going to be able to knock down that mid-range jumper. Sometimes he comes out on fire. Other times he'll be off the mark for quite a while and that, that's really the difference maker. We saw Skane come out last week and knock down seven three-pointers. He set an MNBL record. Though he is capable of shooting lights out from long range. McMillan hits a three ball. He has nine on the year. Mother still from the baseline. No foul called. O'Leary gets the offensive rebound. That's one thing the Celtics are great at is offensive rebounding. Lead pass. Douglas gets the layup. They are pumped up. And the Celtics seem content to settle for that open jump shot. The Sixers much more aggressive, taking the ball straight to the basket. Turnover. Sixers push. They'll have to reset as the ball dribbles around. Olgen's Cherido at the top of the key. One of the best players here for the Celtics team, Elias. Cherido, really the most dominant player in the MNBL. Cherido, we saw five or six weeks ago, he injured his ankle in the first half of a game. The Sixers were down big at the half. Cherido came out in the second half injured and absolutely went off. He, he finished the game with 34 points. The Sixers walked out of the building with a W. So Sheridor, the kind of player that is capable of tape, taking over a ball game. O'Leary gets the roll. Sixers up 7-4. Celtics extend their pressure. They had four guys in the offensive zone. Weiner gets the seal and he'll take it to the basket. Misses, but Skane puts up the trash. Another turnover goes back Celtics' way. Skane, right hand on the left side, can't get it to fall. 
OJ dribbles through the penetration. Lou, lead pass to Weiner. Weiner's hacked. And that's a real good foul by uh, McMillan. Sheridor, a big size advantage under the basket. Would have had an easy layup. Just over halfway through this first quarter. Sixers lead by one, seven to six. Low scoring first quarter. We'll see Weiner here at the line. Weiner on the year, just under 35% from the free throw stripe. And Weiner's a guy that gets to the line a lot. 84 attempts this season, mostly because of his ability to finish with both the left and the right hand. Rejected from behind is Gaines, who must lead the league in blocks. We don't have those official stats, but definitely from personal experience seeing, Gaines just goes off. Another steal and another break by the Celtics. Here's Lou left side, good. Celtics are barely letting the Sixers cross half court. Sixers having trouble breaking the Celtics full court press because it's near impossible to dribble through a press like that. No look pass, Matty Emanuel. The best way to break a press is with the number of passes, the number of fast passes. The last thing you want to do is try to dribble through a double team. Lou ahead to Mother so Mother so can't hit, gets his own rebound, does a foul. Mother still pushed off, going back Sixers way. Ricky Douglas is fouled, he'll get to the line. Mother still that time was beat on the baseline, tried to recover, he picked up the block, but it was an over the back foul called and Douglas to the line for two. Before we get a chance, we'll get a timeout here by the Celtics. They have the lead 10 to 9 in this first quarter. Second game, first round, 2007 MNBL playoff. Game one, we saw the Kings defeat the Sonics and move on to that championship game. And really a game for the ages as both teams were up and down, and it came down to a last-second shot. Off the mark by Halloran. Halloran had a chance to win the game for the Sonics at the buzzer, and that would have been just an incredible finish. So these two teams, the Celtics and the Sixers, playing for who will meet the Kings tomorrow in the championship game, 345 here at the Fairway School in Malden. And the Celtics, obviously, the front runners for that. But the Sixers trying to play, uh, they're trying to wreck the party. And the Sixers are, are possibly the best team for that. They match up very well against the Celtics team. Douglas at the line. Into the game now for the Sixers, number three, Evanson Blanc. Douglas shooting an even 50% from the line this season as he hits both free throws that time. Weiner. Skip pass ahead to Gain. Almost goes out of bounds, able to save it. Gets it right back. Beyond the arc, Trey Mendes. They take the lead right back, 13-11. Emmanuel, left side loses that out of bounds, stays Sixers way. Before the ball even went out of bounds, Emmanuel looked at the referee trying to get a foul call. 
He misses the shot there. O'Leary with the rebound. Well ahead to Skane. Skane gets it picked off. Can't keep it inbounds. Celtics ball. DeRozier to Weiner, who immediately takes it to the basket. But before he can get there, he's fouled. And Weiner, a very big point guard in this league. We've said that time and time again all season long, but what makes him so effective is that he can dribble with both hands and finish around the basket with both his right and his left hand as a left-handed shooter. That makes him very dangerous as a point guard in this league. Here he goes left side again. Tries to put up the runner well long. And here come the Sixers. OJ, coast to coast. Can't get it to finish. Skain skips it ahead to Weiner. Almost goes out of bounds, saves it to DeRozier. Lou from well beyond the arc, short. And both teams seem content to go back and forth, up and down this floor with an up-tempo rhythm. Neither team has really settled down and been effective in the half court, mainly because both teams picking up a lot of full-court pressure. Sixers, two-on-two, two, gets the basket to roll. Ricky Douglas. Also fresh in the game is Sammy G, number 33 for the Sixers. Celtics have yet to substitute. And Douglas, a guy that hasn't taken very many shots this season, but one of the main scorers on this Sixers team. He has a bright future ahead of him. Gaines tried to follow up his own miss, but didn't even lift his feet in the air. It was a bad shot, couldn't finish. Now... You see Rivero go to the basket for two. And a nice move that time by Rivero, splitting a Celtics double team and finishing nicely with his offhand. Sixers up two with less than a minute to go in this first quarter. OJ tries to draw the foul. Can't get it to go. DeRozier is hacked. I think it's pretty safe to say that Sheridor, very ineffective with that flop. Well, it worked the first time, not the second. Reminds me of Vladi Divac, played on the Sacramento Kings for many years. Yep. He's the classic flopper and was very capable of pulling it off. It, it is really an acquired skill, being able to flop and have the referee blow his whistle when there really is very little contact. He must have included a chiropractor in his contract. Sixers swarm the rebound. Sammy Jean has 10 to shoot. Gets rejected. Last shot is thrown down by John O'Leary, and the first quarter comes to an end with the Sixers on top by two, 15 to 13. We've seen a fast-paced game so far, Elias. And an excellent first quarter of play. The Sixers very happy with the score right now. And Sheridor barking at the Celtics bench as time expired in that first quarter. And we've seen repeatedly throughout this season that when the Celtics drive to the basket, when they're aggressive, when they're more assertive, they play well, and obviously in this league, a much higher field goal percentage when you're in the paint. Points in the paint, that's really what determines who's going to win a ball game. And also second chance points, Elias. The Celtics are one of the best in the league at doing that, and even when they get into the paint, they don't always finish, but they have an extra guy there to clean up the trash. And Marvin Mothersill averaging 12 points for this Celtics team. <laughs> really did not touch the ball in that first quarter. No shot attempts for Mothersill. 
And the Celtics are going to have to try to work him into their offensive scheme. Well, Mothersville sometimes likes to stay on the outside. He's got to learn to use his skill and height and penetrate. He's taller than most other players in this league at right now. He can go right above them. So the first time we'll see David Basari, who checks into the game for the Celtics. Very short, stocky Celtics guard, capable of knocking down a nice little mid-range jumper. We saw Basari start the year as the starting point guard, but he's settled in very well coming off the bench. Emmanuel, offensive rebound, puts it back up for two. Horrible job boxing out there by the Celtics, and Manuel had no, you know, hard time trying to get that rebound. And Emmanuel, just the right place in the right time, and a guy you really don't see in the paint very often for a big guy. He prefers to live around the perimeter. He knows how to pass the ball very well, and he can shoot from downtown. There goes Mother still to the basket. That's what he needs to do. Another turnover. Skane with the assist from Mothersill. Looking almost effortless. No pressure that time from the Sixers defense. Pass by Lamb, a little too speedy. Checking on the reflexes of the referee that time. Very nice dodge and weave. Mother still baseline. Gaines tries to put it away. Can't, Sixers ball. Goes out of bounds. Stays with the Celtics. Extra pass against this game. They're all following Weiner, and when Weiner doesn't put it up, he's able to find Skane very well. And that's usually where Skane is most effective under the basket. Olgens puts it up, and he's fouled. And it looks like Emmanuel has gotten the message from the majority of the people in the MNBL who think he's very capable of doing work down low. We've seen him in, in the paint numerous times here in the opening half. That's right, Elias. Earlier on in the season, he was more of an outside shooter. Sheridor at the line, around 65% free throw shooter. Second best in the league, only to Skane. Sheridor averaging 18.3 on the season. He's obviously one of the leading candidates for that MVP award along with Skane. Sabelli fresh in the game for the Celtics, who missed the bulk of the year with an ankle injury. And a scary moment, moment for Sixers fans, as it looked like Sheridor got tangled up with one of his teammates, may have injured his ankle. But we've seen him persevere, we've seen him play through injuries, and it shouldn't be an issue for him. Sorry, tries to spin off his man, gets it to Skane. Weiner loses it. Manuel keeps it in bounds and takes it to the basket. Left side for two. Showing his agility that time, type roping the sideline. Emmanuel, like a nice little ballerina there. The big man <laughs> doing work on the sideline. I don't think we should tell him you said that. Lead pass a little too much in the lead.
So McMillan being very disruptive on top with his pressure defense. Gain short, gets the loose ball. O'Leary loses it. Emmanuel picks it up with his team up one. Just about five minutes to go in this half. And no one's surprised at this point that the Sixers, the lower-seeded team, hanging right in there with the Celtics. Ribeiro tried to go to the basket all by himself, but there was no help from the Sixers. Meanwhile, Skane gets the lucky roll. Puts his team on top. It's 21-20. Skip pass. McMillan. But before he can get the shot off, it's a three-second violation. Skane, left hand. No good. O'Leary tries to get the rebound, but Emmanuel comes up with it again. Lead pass ahead to... Douglas, and he can't hold on. A bit of a screen from the Celtics made him not be able to see the ball. And Emmanuel everywhere on the court here in the second quarter. Doing a lot of good work for the Sixers as he takes a seat, gets a breather. No problem. O'Leary out to Skane. Weiner, once again with the left hand. This time gets it to fall, and he's fouled. And a nice finish that time on the move in the paint for Weiner. As he threw it up with the left hand, a lot of contact on the play. Weiner remained focused on the rim and got the shooter's roll. Number five, Jason Chen makes his first appearance for the Celtics. O'Leary's off to the side. He might be hurt. And a referee timeout called as it looks like O'Leary got hit real hard in the mouth. Looks like there's a little bit of blood going on. He'll go into the locker room, clean that up. I was going to ask Chris if he wants us to come over for weeks. Fans here at the Fairway School in Malden talking about their post-game plans on this St. Patrick's Day in Boston. Of course, the best St. Patrick's Day celebration worldwide. We're really at the heart of it all. Definitely, and I mentioned in the last game the Sonic screen, but the Celtic screen is really where it's at. This is definitely a St. Patrick's Day event as we have both green teams from the MNBL representing today. And whether it's motivation or not for the Celtics, I mean, it is an added incentive to do well in this game. Not that it's on their mind or anything, but St. Patrick's Day in the Celtics, a synonymous statement. O'Leary might be done for the game. We just saw him walk out. If he comes back, he'll certainly need some time for that. Meanwhile, Sixers can't get the shot to fall. Celtics push ahead. Skein. OJ with the rebound. He'll try to push ahead, but can't penetrate through the Celtics defense, and Skein gets the easy layup. Gain somehow emerged from three or four Sixers on that play and a wide open look at the basket. McMillan being guarded by Basari. Inside to OJ. Right hand can't get it to fall. Basari, he'll look to take the pull up J here as he often does. 
Gain cleans up the trash. And it's not often that Basari is off the mark with that mid-range jump shot in transition that time. And the Celtics beginning to pull away a little bit here. McMillan, no. Olgens, no. And Weiner travels before he can get to ahead to Basari. And the Sixers have really not been able to get Sheridor involved yet. Whenever he's had the ball down low under the basket, he's been swarmed by Celtics defenders. And that's one of the bigger reasons why they're down by eight points right now. 28-20 Celtics. Emmanuel Circus shot again. DeRozier ahead to Skane, loses it to McMillan. Tries to find somebody, Emmanuel comes up with it. Tries to draw the foul, he does, and gets the basket. And right now, Matt Emanuel is the sole reason the Sixers are in this ball game. He's been doing work down low all day, and now a chance to convert on the old-fashioned three-point play. He's anything but old-fashioned. Yet still somehow finds a way to convert. It's a five-point ball game. Second quarter, Celtics, Sixers. First round of the 2007 MNBL playoffs. But sorry, hits that time. Exactly what we're talking about. The smooth touch from the little man. He's not shy and he'll knock down that jumper seven days a week. McMillan wants to drive right by him. Dishes off. Douglas, no good. McMillan. Ball goes off a of Weiner. Celtics ball. Actually, ball goes off the Sixers, Celtics ball. Well, throughout a 14-game season, each team has practiced here at the Fairyway School once a week. And, I mean, I would really like to see Basari in practice, see the shooting display he puts on. I'm sure it's very impressive in front of all his teammates. Gain misses another three, but DeRozier with the putback, as the Celtics often do. Gain is missed. A few threes this game, sort of unusual for him. He's usually a good three-point shooter. Lamb back in the game for the Sixers. Out comes McMillan. And we've seen this at times throughout the season. Olden Sheridor running the point guard for the Sixers. Looked like he got away with the travel that time. Definitely got away with the travel. Weiner picks up his third already in this first half. Tough break for Weiner. You don't want to see him get in foul trouble this early in the ballgame. And Weiner is a very foul-prone player. We've seen him foul out of a few games earlier in the season. And although Sheridor has been ineffective thus far, don't count him out. He's a real second-half player. And when the game's on the line, when it counts most, you can count on Sheridor to be there. He will most definitely put up numbers in the second half. Weiner, sixth worst in the league with 39 fouls, leads his team. One of the dirty dozen. Yeah. Not the dirtiest dozen of them all, but on that list. No, that went to Washington this year. And Jim, on a St. Patrick's Day, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not going to stay at your dorms at Emerson College. You, you must have something up your sleeve for tonight. I may, I might. Might enjoy a, a nice evening with my man Elias right here. Don't make it sound all romantic, man. Oh, not at all. It's going to be, there'll be some, there'll be some ladies there. Don't go there. <laughs> How about Olsen's Sheridan, huh? Very acrobatic move that time, skying towards the basket and kissing it off the glass. A big man for a big guy. He's pretty agile. Maybe he does some yoga in his spare time.
Sixers have 10 seconds to get a shot clock. Emmanuel wastes no time. Gain. And after that shot is rejected, we go into halftime with the second seeded Celtics leading the third seeded Sixers by 10. It's 35 25. Back at the MNBL, Jim Foley alongside Elias Feldman. It's halftime, Celtics Sixers. Celtics have a 10 point lead. And Elias, what have you seen from the Celtics so far? Well, the Celtics have started to pull away a little bit. They're a very athletic team. A lot of open looks down low and skate. 13 points in the first half is doing a lot of good work for them. So, I mean, although they haven't got into a real good rhythm, not a very good half court game thus far, they're getting a lot of open looks. Meanwhile, on the Sixers' side, there's Olsen Cherdor, one of their top scorers. Hasn't really done too much this first half. What does he need to do to step it up? Well, Cherdor is just not getting the touches. He needs to get the ball in a position to do work on the lower block. And I'm sure there's going to be a game plan in the second half to get Cherdor the ball down low. He's a, he's a big guy. He's a threat. And he's going to have to put some points on the board. That'll certainly be something to look forward to in this second half. Stay right with us. You're on. Back here at the Fairway School in Malden, a very cold, dreary Saturday afternoon. St. Patrick's Day, good to be with you wherever you may be. Thanks for joining us And what promises to be a very good second half. However, the Celtics on top by 10 right now, 35 to 25. A very aggressive, very physical, very up-tempo first half. And we'll see if the Sixers come out with a different game plan, try to get Olgen Sheridor, their leading scorer, involved. Right there, Sheridor you know? down low. That's what he needs to do, find the shot that's his, and that's certainly it. So we saw in the first half that O'Leary cut his lip. Quite a bit of bleeding there, and the Celtics medical staff not able to stop the bleeding as Mothersill hits a short jumper there. The Celtics medical staff? That was a slight exaggeration, but... We'll see if O'Leary will be able to come back into the game. The Celtics playing a 2-3 defense. And Sibeli tries to intercept the pass, but commits a very hard foul. And the Sixers will inbound from the sideline. The Celtics are a very deep team, and Sibeli certainly helps them. He's the freshest legs of them all starting this season late. He can be a great second-half help for the Celtic team. Shortor, very acrobatic shot from the free throw line doesn't go. That was nice harmonics. Sabelli well. cleaning up garbage underneath. That's what I'm talking about, Sabelli. Running to where the ball is. Ribeiro, the length of the court. Douglas cleans up the they had trash. about three guys on the strong side ready for that rebound. And the Celtics looked very passive on that loose ball. So down to a single-digit deficit. Skein in the corner launches from downtown off the front rim. Sibeli and Emmanuel fight for the loose ball. And Emmanuel wins that battle. The Sixers will get possession. Quick substitution for the Celtics. Back comes Chen for Sibeli. Douglas with a dribble drive off the glass. Nice move that time. And unlike the beginning of this ball game where the Celtics picked up that full court pressure, now it looks like they're going to sit back in that 2-3 zone and allow the Sixers to set up their offense. Well, even still, they should have been able to set up their own defense, and he had too easy of a job cutting through. Douglas with the easy steal in the open floor. Nice finish with the right hand. The Sixers have done a great job in this ball game hitting their open layups, Elias. I mean, outside of Sheridor somewhat in the first half, but especially on the fast break. And Emmanuel was forced to foul Skane after Skane beat him with a nice head fake. And now Mothersill on the dribble, picks it up, finds Skane, nice pass under the basket. Sixers were looking everywhere else, and Skane was on the outside, was able to cut right in. They were able to find the quick pass, didn't stop, put the shot right up. 
41-33. Sixers trailing by six. Trailing by nine, excuse me. Here early on in the third quarter as Weiner intercepts an errant pass from the Sixers. The left-handed teardrop doesn't go. The tip in much of the same, and Mother still with a loose ball. Skein with an easy look. He waited for McMillan to go by him so he could have the open look. Oftentimes you'll see players get the shot, get the ball in the air, and just try to put it up, not realizing what the defense is doing to you. Sometimes that's a good idea, you know, if you have no one else around you. But if the defender's coming right to you, you have to wait till he passes by, and then you can put it up. A nice dish that time. The assist goes to Sheridor. It's Douglas with two. Mother still guarded by Romero. Goes behind a pick. Finds Skane in the corner who launches an off-balance shot. It's off the mark. And Great here comes McMillan. There by Emmanuel. Get his hand in his face. Barrow with the dribble drive, dribbles off his foot and a jump ball called. So the Celtics and the Sixers doing battle, 43-35. Celtics still on top, Elias Feldman, Jim Foley, coming to you from the Fairway School in Malden. Playoff action and two teams fighting for who will face the Kings in the championship game tomorrow right here at 345. Lou with a nice head fake that time and absolutely gets pummeled by yeah, Douglas. Very physical game thus far. We saw O'Leary get hurt earlier. We saw Sheridor go down and now Lou. Fortunately for O'Leary, he took the very worst of it. He's, we still haven't seen him back. He's on the sidelines right now. So two leaders for each respective team, Marvin Mothersill, Olgen's Cherador. Both have yet to become involved in this game as Cherador now on the open floor. Nice dish that time to Ribeiro who finishes. That's exactly what he needed to do. Juice has been trying to do some stuff, going to the basket, and if he's been outnumbered, he's still putting it up. However, that time he was able to find the guy underneath. And Sheridor is adjusting nicely. He's being swarmed by Celtics defenders, but he's been willing to pass the ball, and he's made some very nice passes down low as Skane finishes with the loose ball. You know, sometimes I think these guys listen to us when we do our halftime analysis. Sheridor, two dribbles, goes up strong, doesn't get the roll. And Sibeli with the outlap pass to Lou. Lou, the Celtics have numbers. Should have gone glass there. And second and third chance, point blank opportunities by the Celtics. They can't get the easy layup to fall. And that time Lou, Mothersill, and Skein were all camping out beneath the Celtics basket with only one Sixers defender there and not able to put that easy layup in the basket. That silly foul on Mother still gets him bench time. So past the halfway point of this third quarter, 45-37, Celtics clinging to a narrow lead. Emmanuel with a little head fake, working on the baseline, picks up his dribble, finds Ribeiro, top of the key. Sheridor to the middle of the lane. He loses possession, but it's off a Celtics defender. I'd like to see the Sixers get Sammy G, number 33, involved now. He didn't see much action in the first half. You see him here now in the second half, who's inbounding the ball. Seeing a very quick, speedy Sixers guard. A big size disadvantage, but he has the ability to find openings in a Celtics defense. Ribeiro with the floater off the mark. 
Outlet pass to Lou. And Skane gets the bucket after a big no call that time. It looked like Skane. He completely wiped. Who is that? It looked like Skane just shoved the Sixers player to the floor. The whistle was oh, not blown. Oh, it's Blanc. And a little confusion right now in the gym at the Fairway School. A soft buzz has fallen over the crowd who's barking at the referees right now as Blanc walks out of the gym to catch a breath of air. And the Celtics lead is back up to 10. Two minutes to play in the third. Ribeiro fires away from downtown and Sheridor cleans up the track. Weiner now will do it himself with the left hand. DeRocher doing work down low and not able to come up with the ball. And now O'Leary will check back into the game. He has a looks very like strange looking <laughs> bandage over his lip. It a looks nice like he's a white, white mustache. Well, we knew he didn't want to miss any time in this playoff game. That's for certain. Another rejection by Skane. And Emmanuel has the tendency to bring the ball down when he's under the basket. As a big man, you want to keep the ball above your head and go straight back up towards the basket. Skane now casts away from long range and rims out. That was a very lanky shot right there. Barrow threw the bait ahead to Emmanuel, who wasn't able to chase it down. And very sloppy play here. One minute to play in the third. Neither team able to really make a statement here and start pulling away. O'Leary comes in and makes an immediate impact with that little leaner in the lane. And that's exactly what we saw Suda do when he came back into the game. Not, neither player... First Suda, now O'Leary is going to let a little injury get him down. Emmanuel with the head fake. Doesn't follow his shot, and Skane comes up with a rebound. So 30 seconds to play in this third quarter. Weiner dishes to O'Leary, up and under move. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't under yet. And the Sixers pushed the other way for the easy bucket. He was just trying to get a foul call there. He didn't even make it to the strong side yet by the time he tried to put the ball up. So 10 seconds to play. The Celtics will have the last shot of this third quarter. Weiner with a nice head fake. Got his defender in the air and then finished with the left, left hand. And the clock will stop. He'll go to the line to try to convert the three-point play. I'm from Haiti, I'm sorry. We can take a little bit more than that. We'll take out a chicken caveat out. So five seconds in the quarter. And the ball goes out of bounds and the buzzer sounds. So the same advantage for the Celtics at the end of three as it was at the half, a 10-point advantage, 51 to 41. And a very sloppy third quarter. We'll see if the Sixers can make a push in the fourth and try to keep their championship game hopes alive.
So the Celtics really have to be happy with their position right now. Didn't play very well at all in the third quarter, but still up by 10. Well, we know Coach Magic won't let up. He's a guy that will fight to the very end. Doesn't matter how big a lead, how small the lead, he'll put his best players in that he thinks can get the job done. This 10-point lead doesn't mean anything, especially in a playoff game. And Coach Magic has been the center of quite a bit of controversy over the years. He's been accused of running up the score, but, I mean, he had a very valid defense on ATR last week. He said he's going to put his best players out on the floor to compete against the best players of the opposing team, and the final score really has no impact on that whatsoever. So here we go, the final 10 minutes of play. This will decide who goes up against the Kings tomorrow in the championship game. Gain the bottom of the net from a long two-point shot. We didn't see too much of Skane in the third quarter. That's good to see him get off to a quick start here in the fourth. Douglas tries to answer, and the ball swatted away. Liner doesn't have numbers. He'll push regardless, and he, he takes travels. too many steps. sometimes tries to use his left hand too much even for himself on the passes and on the shots. He tried to go to the left hand for the pass there and it caused him to take the extra step. Lou takes it right at Douglas. He accomplishes what he wanted to do and he goes to the line for two. So the Sixers are going to have to make a push right now if they have any chance of coming back in this game. They're slowly, slowly getting out of hand a little bit. Down by 12. Now 13 after Lou's first free throw. He's not a bad guy to put at the line. 46% on the year. Celtics will continue to use their 2-3 zone. It's worked quite well for them thus far. We saw them use the full court press in the first half. They've resorted to the 2-3 in the second half. They maintain this 14-point lead here in the fourth quarter. And I'm still waiting to see if Sheridor can do some work down low. He's been very quiet today, and we mentioned at the outset of the broadcast that Sheridor was going to be the difference maker. As Mother still cleans up the Lou miss. I wanted to see a dunk there. Rivera with the dribble drive from the right elbow off the back of the rim. Douglas comes down with the loose ball and flips it in with the right hand. Weiner all by himself. The teardrop goes down and if Sheridor is not going to get involved, the Sixers are going to have to turn to somebody else and Douglas may be that man. They need someone to step up and put some points on the board real fast. That's right. He's the guy to do it as the second leading scorer on this team. He has a great inside and outside shot. And a good hustle play that time for both Sheridor and Skane, who will both be involved with the jump ball at center court. So 59-43. to 43, The Celtics up by a bundle right now. Shoto was able to win that tip because Skane hurt his double on that last play. We'll see how it plays out for him. The Celtics have numbers. Three on one. Mother still. Sky's high to throw it down. There the it is. Man. That's what I like to see. And Mother still trying to hold a smile back as he knows he entertained the crowd right there on the open floor. Good way to finish the game. I think that's five on him. So he's done. And we see Sabelli check back into the game for the Celtics. As Ribeiro goes to the line for two as he's fouled in the process of shooting. Grab 
And the Sixers coach, Cliff Williams, standing, arms crossed on the Sixers sideline. A very somber look on his face. Definitely not what he expected out of the Sixer team. Skein from the top of the key. The ball was deflected. Douglas now way ahead of the pack, but a foul called before Douglas took the shot. And now a little puff, pushing and shoving back on the other end. And well after the whistle was blown, Skein went up and very violently blocked Douglas's shot. Ribeiro, the little flotation device, rims out. Sixty-one to forty-five, a sixteen-point advantage for the Celtics, and if this score holds up, it will be the Celtics and the Kings tomorrow. Very fitting that the number one and number two teams in the MNBL will face off for the championship. We knew that's what most people have wanted all season. They just might get their wish. Celtics had been number one for the bulk of the season. Sixers beat them, and then the Kings were able to beat them. Sixers ended up finishing in third place, Celtics second, Kings first. But none of that matters now in the playoffs. Wow. An acrobatic move from Emmanuel with his back to the basket. He flipped it up over his head. And we can safely say that's a top 10 play nominee. <laughs> that's a good idea. I like that. MNBL top 10 on ATR. And right now, the fouls building up for the Sixers team. Very outwardly frustrated right now. And when this game started, both teams were neck and neck. It looked like the Sixers were going to put up a pretty good fight. But the second half has really not lived up to its billing. So Leary with the bunny hop into the lane was fouled. You can tell that Cut has been aggravating him ever since. He'll probably have to get positions after this game. Good job by him, though, being able to come back and fight, help his team get this potential victory. Now, if he can just learn to tuck his shirt in. Off the missed free throw, Skein with a nice tip in. Totally unacceptable. And the Sixers just did not box out. It's very simple. It looks like they're completely deflated right now. Not very many passes. Not playing a physical game. And another turnover. But sorry, didn't have much of a chance there on OJ. Easy block. However, the good blockers in basketball are able to block it to either their teammates or keep it in bounds to keep the play alive. If you knock it out of bounds, the other team is just able to keep the possession. Now, Jim, is there a technical term for that? Is that called controlled blocking? I've never heard of such a thing. It's my term. Very original. Very. We should, we should propose this. The Foley block. And I understand that after this game, there's a coach's shoot-around. The coaches will be warming up to play. But don't you dare come, because it's closed to the public. It's closed to the public, but I mean, I'm going to put my shorts on. I'm going to strap on my Air Force 2s and do some work out there. <laughs> As will I. Hello. I got the avias. It's good enough. I really don't know if the tennis shoe can compete against the old-school basketball kick. Talent is where it counts. And that will be uh, proven as well <laughs> very shortly. I look forward to it. So this one looks like it's almost in the book, 64-47.
just three minutes to play. As Douglas not able even to draw iron on that three-point attempt. And right now, Jim, if you look at the two teams that are most likely going to be playing tomorrow, the Kings already in the championship game. The Celtics look like they're well on their way there. I mean, who, who do you give that advantage to? I mean, between two teams that split the season series, one and one against each other, it seems like they're very evenly matched. That's true. I give the advantage to the Celtics because between the two games they've played each other in this year, the Sixers, I'm sorry, the Kings win was very small. The Celtics win was very big. So based on that overall margin of numbers, the Celtics have outscored the Kings. And since this game will air after the championship game, we can look at this in retrospect. You can analyze our analysis since it's really going to be nullified. Wow, that's deep. Analysis on analysis. Very philosophical statements coming from the uh, MNBL broadcasters. And a hard foul was called on the Sixers, so Lou has two free throws right there. They call it a hard foul, and other circles it's called a flagrant foul. So the Celtics had those two free throws and possession. Skane launches, doesn't hit. The Sixers trying to put some points on the board, trying to play for a little bit of pride right now. And the Celtics really have no need to take a shot right here. No shot clock. They can hold on to it. They can run the clock out. And the Celtics will advance to the championship game tomorrow, 345, against the Kings. Emmanuel doesn't have numbers. He doesn't care and misses the layup. Yeah, even on the fast break here, these guys are just looking sluggish. You can tell they understand their fate. So two minutes to play, and still Coach Magic has not taken his starters out of the game. I wonder if he ever will do so. We could call these garbage minutes at this point. Celtics up by 18, under two minutes to play, all but over from the Fairway School in Malden. Thanks for joining us. Elias Feldman alongside Jim Foley. Nestor Dudley behind the camera doing good work as always. And the Celtics take a timeout for no apparent reason with this game in the book. Uh, the, the Sixers had to take a timeout there because they couldn't inbound the ball. Excuse me. You're welcome. You are my eyes. Now that was going to be poetic. <laughs> I decided against it. You didn't play bad today. Who doesn't have a good game? Like I told Chris, when you couldn't hit a layup. Like I told Chris, when you walked into the uh, big dance, you get your ass kicked. Get into the big dance this way, a hot spot game, you'll oh, yeah. be better tomorrow. <laughs> Look good for and one wonders how this game will have an effect on the Celtics' chances tomorrow. I mean, they really have not been challenged all afternoon. And there, there could be a little, a little letdown tomorrow. The Kings played a very close game, one by two, earlier today against the Sonics. The Celtics have been somewhat lackadaisical in blowing out the Sixers today. So we'll see if they come out with a head of steam tomorrow and play with the kind of intensity that it's required for a championship game. I don't know, Elias. We did see the Celtics come out with a full boat of steam to start this game, and even the Sixers kept it close in this first quarter. I will give you that, but, I mean, this whole second half has been a very sloppy brand of basketball, and the Celtics have not gotten into their game. I mean, they haven't played a half-court game. They haven't gotten the ball 
to their playmakers in an isolation situation where they could break people down off the dribble. I have a good idea Celtics coach Magic will have something up his sleeve to tell his players. He's the only Celtics coach in franchise history to not have a championship on his resume. So he's not concerned about all that other talk. He just wants to win his championship for himself and his team. So one minute to play. And a foul is called on the Sixers' Ribeiro. And the Sixers are in a double bonus, so Weiner will have two free throws. The Celtics have a long history of championships, winning their last one in 2000. We mentioned Sixers coach Cliff Williams and Coach Magic on the same coaching staff that year. On, on the other hand, the Sixers haven't won in quite a while. 1997 was their last championship. And it looks like they're going to have to wait another year to go at it again. That's right. Coach Magic wasn't the head coach then for the Celtics, so this will be his first one as a head coach if he's able to win tomorrow. So 30 seconds to play and a sloppy pass from Lou. And the clock slowly running out on the Sixers season. A very disappointing showing here. And the Sixers have six players out of the floor. The referees neglect to notice. And the Didn't Sixers, really help them either way. The Sixers are playing a different game here. They still have six on the court. No one's coming off. Even with the acknowledgement, still no Sixers willing to come off the court. Very confident Coach Magic. And Douglas with a completely ill-advised foul. He'll take a seat. He fouls out of the game. Hopefully you can hear some of the trash talking going on around us. Coach Magic in front. We have the Kings coach sitting right behind us as well. He said, I'll play in. six all game if that's cool with you. Take whatever he can get, Coach Glenn. Come on now. So as the buzzer sounds, the final score here from the Fairway School in Malden, 66 to 51. The Celtics come out and absolutely tra trounce the Sixers. So the Celtics will advance to the championship game tomorrow and take on the Kings. Once again, the final 67-51. Jim, this game really did not live up to its billing. The Celtics came out, dominated in the second half, a very sloppy game, and now the Celtics have earned the right to play the Kings tomorrow. Well, I thought the Celtics were the best team all season long. Despite this number two seed, I understand they had one less win than the Kings, but normally a 12-2 and two record is going to get you a number one seed. I think the Celtics just dominated every facet of this game, and deservedly so. They were a better team than the Sixers. Sixers have been just a mediocre team. We're around the fifth spot, fourth spot all year. They happened to get the third seed because they beat the Sonics in a, a playoff to determine which seeding it was, but 
I just think the Celtics just took over and they are so ready for the Kings tomorrow. And for the on the on the Sixers part, they did have a good season. However, it wasn't good enough, and Sheridor was the guy that didn't get involved for them. The big man down low didn't uh, put up the numbers, and he really didn't get the ball in any sort of position to make a move around the basket. Unfortunately, not a good game for him. However, a great season for him. And congratulations to the Sixers for making it this far, and we'll see if OJ can get his plaque on his name on the plaque for the MVP. Well, we saw two, uh, two games here today, the Kings advancing to the championship game in the first game. A great finish, winning by two over the Sonics. Here, the Celtics will advance as well, uh, a blowout of the Sixers. So the two best teams in the MNBL going at it tomorrow, 345. We hope you'll join us. So for Nestor Dudley behind the camera, doing good work, everyone behind the scenes. For Jim Foley, Elias Feldman, thanks for joining us. So long and have a happy St. Patrick's Day.